Now available on paperback and Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, the man with nothing to lose. The man who rules the world runs with the irresistible force of a man with nothing to lose in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Get the regular and variant editions of John Haynes, the man with nothing to lose on Amazon.com today. Hi everyone, it's your boy Sean, and I'm here with a comic review video. Now, I've been an Iron Man fan ever since I was about maybe four or five years old. And the Iron Man character really started to become one I started to identify with after I had a brain aneurysm at seven years old. And when I got out of the hospital, this comic was one of the ones that I read on the regular because it was one in my brother's comic collection. And I started to really relate to the character for two reasons. One, I really related to the Tony Stark character because one, he was rich, and two, because he was a survivor of a tragedy that affected his body like it affected my brain when I was seven years old. So when I saw Tony Stark going out there and continuing to persevere, in the space in spite of his limitations that was one of those things that made me want to persevere and made me want to go out here and be my best even though people were saying that i was slow people were saying that i was retarded and people were saying that there was something wrong with me i wanted to go out here and continue to persevere and show everybody that i could go out here and perform on a high level so that was the thing that made the Iron Man character one I had started to have a connection with. The other thing that made me start to connect with the Iron Man character was his best friend, Jim Rhodes. Now, the books in my brother's collection that he gave me to read were the ones that were coming from the David Michelini and Bob Layton run. And I still have those comics in my collection to this day. They're a little beat up, but they mean a lot to me because the Jim Rhodes character was the first black man I ever saw in a comic and seeing that black man in that comic meant a lot to me because here was a guy who was not only Tony's best friend but he was also showing that he could equally be a hero even if he didn't have the armor because in many of the Iron Man books you would see Jim Rhodes going into action especially during the 80s when I started collecting the second Michelini Leighton run and Rhodey was just as capable as Tony even though he did not have the armor and he was just as much a hero as Tony even though he didn't have the armor so I loved the Iron Man character for years and it deeply disappointed me to see how the character had fallen starting in 1995 at the end of the amazing Len Kamenisky Kevin Hoppagood run. I mean, Kevin Hoppagood put together some masterpiece designs with War Machine, the neuromimetic tele telepresence armor, and the modular armor. I mean, he took the Iron Man design to a new visual level with those designs and even the designs of characters like Firepower, Atom Smasher. I mean, he just he revolutionized the designs of characters and he took other designs like Hulkbuster and made them into household names. I mean, his visual designs are, were absolutely fantastic because he brought in texture to the Iron Man armor, he brought in layers, he brought in the segmenting. All of that came from Kevin Hopgood and he just absolutely took Iron Man to another level. I mean, Kamenisky, Hopgood, Iron Man, I'd have to say, is in the top five Iron Man runs. I mean, Michelini Layton is number one, as I see it. Um, Kamenisky, Hopgood is number two. I mean, Stanley, I would say, is number th three, because that one's all right. And number four is the Busick Chen Iron Man. And Busick and Chen managed to bring Iron Man's luster back to the to the character and after the dreadful crossing and the awful heroes reborn run of the character and the iron man character has not really had a really strong run of comics ever since the last days of the kurt Busick sean chen run of comics that was the last time 
we ever got a really good run of Iron Man comics. And that, sadly, was back in about 2000, 2001. So we haven't really had that fantastic run of Iron Man comic books, even though the character is the was the flagship for the Marvel Cinematic Universe and was able to carry the Marvel Cinematic Universe with the fantastic portrayal of Robert Downey Jr. that started in that 2008 movie Iron Man, which laid the foundation for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And as an Iron Man fan, I have had to suffer through some absolutely horrific runs on the character, things like the absolutely horrible Dan Slott run that just recently finished, the absolutely horrible Brian Michael Bendis run, and it's been a very, very painful, I say, two decades for most Iron Man fans. Now, some people, they like the extremist storylines, but I always thought they were a bit too militaristic for me, but I'm wanting a good Iron Man comic that's filled with action and adventure, and it's looking like Christopher Cantwell and Kai Fu are looking to take the character in a different direction. Now, when I saw this Alex Ross cover in some um, Bounding in the Comics or one of the other websites, I was really intrigued by it because it's something I call a retro mod because it's a take on what people are doing with cars these days, what they call resto mods, where they take the shell of something like a box Chevy or a 67 Impala, and then what they do is they update the, the interior, they update the engine by giving it, instead of like a 350, they give us an LS, or they give us, you know, a Hellcat engine in a Charger, and then they give us updated electronics, updated transmission, updated interior. So on the outside, it looks like the classic, but on the inside, it's modern. And that's what Alex Ross's design really reminds me of. It reminds me a lot of those retro mod cars that are becoming the thing right now. So you'll have something like a 67 Impala on the outside, but it'll have a LS engine and it'll have updated interior and electronics on the inside. Or you'll have your Dodge Charger from the 69 and it'll have a Hellcat engine and it'll have updated interior on the inside. And that's what this new Iron Man design from Alex Ross really reminded me of. And I'm hoping we get a Marvel Legends figure of that armor. Now, the comic itself, um, outside of the cover, is absolutely fantastic. It is a first step in the right direction, as I see it, for the character. Now, your Christopher Cantwell said he wanted to take the character back to his roots. And we start to see that in the first couple of pages of the book. So the Iron Man book, we're starting out with the newer, with the more recent version of the suit, but we are going to see him evolve later on into the, uh, to the retro mod, as I call it, suit. So he starts out having a fight with Terax, and that practically takes um, on some major damage on a satellite. And I like seeing that because we're starting to see a book doing things that I talk about, like in many of my videos, about the book starting out with action. So we get action on the first on the first couple of pages, and we get a pictures that show us who the main character is, what he wants to do, and more importantly, we get start to get reasons to care about Tony Stark again. So Tony Stark, after wrecking that satellite in his current suit, He's dealing with the wrath of social media, and he's thinking about the direction of his life and where he wants to go. And this is this is a good start for the character, and this is where Michelini and Layton started working on the character back in 19, I think 1977 or so, um, because Tony Stark was not really that great of a character until David Michelini started putting layers on the character and started putting you know, depth on the character and giving us these different aspects of it. So Tony's is thinking about the direction of his life and things that he wants to do. And he's thinking about getting 
back to basics. And that's something I really wanted to see with this comic was getting Tony back to the basics of being a superhero and the basics of what Iron Man really is. This guy who lives in an ivory tower, but this armor brings him down to the people. And as this knight, he serves the people and he connects with the people all around him because that's core to who Iron Man is and he's getting back to people and relationships with people. So that was something I liked seeing that he was packing up all of this, you know, super duper stuff we saw from the awful Iron Man 2020 storyline and the other couple of storylines, um, things like shape changing armor, stuff like that. And we're starting to get back to basics. Now, Glory Grant wants to do wanted to do something with him, but things just didn't work out. But Tony's coming back to New York. And he's instead of him driving the big fancy cars, he goes out and picks up a Dodge Aspen. Um, Dodge Aspens back in the day. Uh, I, that's one of the only thing I have an issue with with Cantwell in the story. He talks about Dodge Aspens having being something people want. Dodge Aspens were rust buckets, and they were known for having serious problems because the Aspen was originally supposed to replace the um, Dodge. Um, Dart and the Plymouth Valiant back in the 80s and it was a major failure for Chrysler. It was a major disaster and it would be questionable to me for what Tony wanting this car because this car was considered a piece of junk back in the day. I mean it was not considered top quality from Chrysler. I mean if you wanted to get you know something from the 70s I would say a 70s Chevelle or something like that. Chevelles can be found for fairly cheap, beat up or something like that, or even getting a 70 Monte Carlo, but they, they went with this for re, for some reason. I guess to say that, you know, Tony's got this flawed car that's sort of like flawed like him, and it's set in the past, but, but that's that's something I, I just like seeing um, with the characters that they're trying to show that, you know, a car is a part of him, but I don't know about the Aspen because the Aspen's a rust bucket, so... We get some more scenes of him setting up his base in um, New York City. Him ending it with the Wasp, thankfully, because that never worked. I remember the Avengers storyline in the 80s where Tony was trying to get with the Wasp, and it was just Captain America thankfully stopped that. And then on the next page, we get him get going, getting into a race with a guy. And these are all things that Tony would do. I mean, these, these things are in character for Tony Stark. If you've read old Iron Man's, we're, you're starting to see that he's starting to act like the Tony Stark we knew and not this character that we've gotten over the last 20 years. And he goes and has a race with this guy. We know an El anybody who knows cars knows an El Camino with, with dust and Aspen. So Tony bets five gram to race this guy. And I love seeing that because it, it, it grounds the character. It shows us, you know, how human he is. And I just like seeing this. This is, this, is, this is some great panel work here. I mean, really tells a great story. I mean, Kai Fu's art is fantastic here. And we get this race. And it, again, we're getting action. Whether it be with the superhero part or the secret identity part, we're getting action. And that's what a comic book is supposed to be. We're not getting a whole host of expository sequences. We're getting, you know, good action, good character development, good pacing. And we're getting to know Tony as he redefines his roots. So after that little race he has, he goes out here and he um, has a meeting where he runs into Patsy Walker. And I'm not too f much of a fan of Patsy Walker. I would have rather this been Bethany Cabe and but Bethany Cabe had been ruined by Dan Slott but Bethany Cabe is somebody who really is core to the Iron Man character and I really would have loved to have seen her in this story but they decided to use Patsy Walker for some reason and I'm hoping it works out because Patsy has also suffered through numerous really bad um excuse me I'm sorry I just this um page has this um fold out has you know gotten in the way but Patsy has really suffered through some bad storylines since the 90s, and her character could use a good turnaround, too. I mean, even though she suffered through her husband and being a mess and then winding up getting killed and then winding up in a whole bunch of woke SJW books. And I'm hoping that Christopher Cantwell can redeem her character as well because she needs 
a major turnaround too. So this goes on. They're at the party, and Tony is um, talking to her, and they're, they're getting. He's talking about this party, and he's talking about how he's going to do something um, as related to the um, setting doc, dealing with the tech, and we get a nice build into the villain here. You know, it's a nice foreshadowing. So. Everything here is really well set up, and the story builds at a nice pace. So, after Tony leaves the party, he then heads downstairs to show Patsy his new armor. And I love seeing that the armor is back in the briefcase again. I mean, if you're an old-school Iron Man fan like I am, seeing that armor in the briefcase, this just lets you know this is what Iron Man is all about. I mean... Tony Stark having the suit in the briefcase, that was core to who that character was ever since his inception in the 60s with Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. I mean, this 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 is just taking us way back. And this panel, you know, this is the one that really this is the one that really makes you say, oh, this is this is an Iron Man book. Because we've got this panel that pays homage to the iconic Iron Man 126. And I'm not going to go any further into, into the comic but to, because I don't want to get a copyright strike. So I'm going to leave it right here. But I can just honestly tell you, this is a great start for the Iron Man character. It's the best Iron Man book since 1998, since Kurt Busiek and Sean Chen got a hold of the character and brought back the luster to the Iron Man character after the absolutely horrific crossing. And this is the what I'm hoping is the start of a new golden age for the Golden Avenger. Because we have not really had a really great Iron Man run in the comics, I say, since about 2001 when Busick and Chen left the comic. Others will say when Warren Ellis left for Extremis, but I will say um, for 2000, 2001, when Busick and Chen left, we have not had that fantastic Iron Man run that practically makes you go, this is Tony Stark, this is Iron Man, this is a book I anticipate getting off the shelf, and this is a book that I anticipate getting off the shelf. I mean, when I read this online, I was just floored by how fantastic it was. And it was so good that I had to go to eBay to go pick up this comic. Because I know I could have got on a train and gone down to Midtown Comics, but the shipping was about the same. I got free shipping for the price of the book. And this was definitely worth it. I mean, if you really want to get into Iron Man, you really want to pick up this Iron Man number one. Now, I know I'm late with this review, but I really had a lot of other stuff going on. But I had to pick this one up, and I had to have a hard copy of it because it's just an absolutely fantastic fresh start for the Iron Man character. It's the best Iron Man book we have seen in, I say, about a good 17, 18 years. And it's one that I, I highly recommend you go out here and pick up. And I'm hoping Marvel Editorial do, helps keep do this character justice because Iron Man has shown that he can be a box office sensation. He can be the flagship of the MCU. And he could be just as big a sensation in comics if Marvel lets this creative team just run with the football. If Marvel's Editorial let, gives the creators the space to go out here and create we could be in for the start of another golden age for the Golden Avenger. Now, if you want to see me do more comic video reviews like this, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App, and that'll help me be able to go out here and buy more comics to do more comic reviews. And if you want to pick up some of my SJS Direct publications like the ISIS series, the E-Steam series, the John Hayes series, 
or the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, or my men's issues books like Stop Simpin' and The Man Crisis, you can find all of those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them on Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Those who refuse the gift of eternal life are condemned to walk.